All right, guys, today we're going to do the five easiest judo throws that you can do in jiu-jitsu. We recently did a video of top five judo throws for jiu-jitsu, but we realized that judo is a really difficult sport and it takes a lot of time to get good at a certain takedown. So these are five takedowns that we've picked that are very easy to learn, but still highly effective. All right, guys, uh, today we're going to be working on ogoshi, or the hip toss. Very simple takedown. Uh, often when a takedown is very simple, it means that you have to get the basics very good. So you have to make sure that your off balance is very good and you have to make sure that your foot placement is good as well, okay? Uh, if you're doing a simple takedown, then you need to be very precise. So uh, go from this angle, because I throw left-handed. So whenever I'm looking to do a throw, I need to think about the direction in which I want my partner's body to be thrown. So for example, when we're doing a hip toss, you need to think that the initial direction of your partner is in an upward motion. This means that when I do my kazushi or I look to break the balance, I need to make sure that the initial motion of Reese's body is in an upward direction. So a habit that a lot of people get into is that as we look to make grips, in this situation I have an underhook and I have control of Reese's wrist. Because I'm bending over and I'm already underneath Reese's body, it's habitual for me to grab his arm and pull it down towards the floor. The problem with this is that because his arm isn't pulling in a downward direction, if I look to make hip connection, I make good hip connection, his arm is already driving downwards and I cannot create proper kazushi, which is known as breaking of the balance. So, to make my kazushi work, we say that you almost imagine that you're reading the time and like looking at a watch on your wrist. So I'm in this position, I have an underhook, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look to drive and pull the wrist up towards my arm in this position. So I'm like looking at my wrist as I turn. It's also really important that you actually look at the wrist. The reason for this is that when you're doing a throw, you need to look in the direction in which you're throwing, okay? So I'm in this direction. I can start with downward motion, that's fine, but the second I look to attempt to do this throw, I'm gonna to start to pull the arm up and look towards my list. At the same time, I'm looking at bringing my feet together. Really important thing to note is that a hip toss comes from power from your legs. It is impossible to create power if my legs are in a split position here like this. I can't swat, squat and I can't drive. So when I'm doing this, you'll notice that my feet are gonna make a connection in the center of the body and they're gonna to be together in this direction. I need to be in a spot where I feel like I could squat with Reese on my back. Okay, now from here, we're gonna bring this all together. So I need to make hip connection, foot connection, and make sure my kazushi is correct. So I'm gonna drag the arm up to my head. I step in with this foot, my other foot is also gonna come into this position. Now, my hips do the work here, so I have to bring my hips just across Reese's hip line. So here like this, I bring my hips across the hip line, and now from this position, I make sure I turn my head as I finish. So if I keep looking in this direction, I'm gonna really struggle with the throw, so I turn my head and look to finish the throw. So let's go through this again. I'm here like this. I have an underhook grip. From here, I can initially pull down, that's fine. I'm looking to bring both my feet in between his body, coming through and throwing through in the position. We'll just do it one more time. So I'm in this position, I have control of his wrist, pulling this down to the ground. As I feel him start to explode back up, I'm lifting up in that position. So here. So take yeah, down. Got it. The, soul, the, the next takedown that we're going to teach uh, is actually banned in our gym. The reason why we've banned it in the gym is that the risk of injury for this takedown is actually quite high. So we're going to talk about the takedown, a way in which you could consider doing it in competition, and a way in which you can modify this takedown so it's safe to do it in the gym. Um, when we look at it, it's two separate takedowns. So the takedown we're looking at is Taniyatoshi, and we'll talk about the risk of Taniyatoshi first. So Taniyatoshi is attempted from this position here, okay? If I attempt it, um, what I'm looking at doing is I'm holding on, on onto like uh, Reese's hip bone, holding onto his hand. I'm looking at stepping behind the body and throwing Reese over my leg. The issue why this is so dangerous is that if I stuff this up, and instead of stepping the whole way across his body, I step just directly on top of his leg. I put so much pressure on his knee line that he can uh, tear the ligaments in his leg. There's plenty of guys at our gym that have busted their ACLs doing this exact takedown. So what we're gonna look to do to make this a lot safer is switch it to a Sukui Nagi, very similar movement, but instead, I'm gonna throw my arms across the body. So, 
For a Sukui Nagi, let's say that I'm in this position and maybe I have a collar tie instead and Reese is looking to strip my collar tie the whole time and like drive it down to the floor. As he looks to strip my collar tie, and he's looking to strip to gain control of my arm, what I'm gonna do, so as he goes to strip it, he looks to strip, I'm gonna throw my hand all the way across his legs in this position. Because I'm grabbing his far leg, it means that I'm not at risk of stuffing up his knee. Uh, it ensures that I've got the whole way across the body. It's a much less risky throw. So, I'm here like this. Reese looks to strip the grip. As he strips it, I'm grabbing the far leg. Both hands come to the inside and I'm throwing my knee across the body. From here, I'm gonna to look to scoop the knees up towards the ceiling. Remember to look in the direction in which you're throwing. So if I just look forwards, it's really hard to finish the throw, but as I look, I'm gonna turn my head and drive down that position and look to take him down. So, one more time. I've got this collar tie. Reese looks to strip the grip. As he strips it, I'm grabbing the far leg. Coming through, I'm gonna scoop both legs up in this position. I look to turn the corner as I finish the takedown, look in the direction in which I throw. With a mask on, smiling, but my heart sings. All right, we're not gonna work on a sumigashi. Sumigashi is a very easy uh, takedown in that you don't need to be that athletic to make this takedown work. So let's look at common positions in which you can attack a sumigashi. Uh, for today, we're gonna to be looking at taking a cross grip or a lat grip. Uh, it's one of the easiest ways to attempt to do a sumigashi. Uh, to set this up, often Reese will be taking a collar tie on my neck. I'm looking at upgrading this to a cross grip or lat grip. So, first thing I'm looking at doing is stripping the grip. As I strip the grip, I'm plying his fingers off. As I ply the fingers off, to help me, I'm gonna actually drive the elbow up as well. So I'm driving elbow up, stripping the fingers, and taking control of the lap. Once I gain control of the lat, I actually need to switch my hands. My hand's facing up in this direction. I'm gonna pull reach forwards, and I'm switching and coming underneath his uh, tricep, holding onto the tricep here like this, holding the lat and really tight. Now, what's really important is that I, think of, I need to think about what Reese's defense for this technique is, which is to sprawl on top of me. For Reese to sprawl, he needs to get his hips away from my body. So as I grab his lat, I'm looking at dragging and pulling him in as tight to my body as possible. Now from here, this is the important part, I need to actually hang off Reese. So, I'm gonna step my foot in between Reese's body, but as I step my foot, as soon as it hits the floor, all of my weight is gonna hang off his top, of bo top body. That is essentially Kazushi. It's breaking his balance and driving his weight over the top of me. So I'm in here like this, holding his weight down. I'm driving my foot in. As I drive the foot in, I'm gonna look to sit on this foot. My other foot makes connection with his legs. So I'm driving through and underneath. I'm finishing the takedown. Reese has a collar tie. He takes the collar tie. I'm looking at stripping the grip, gaining control of the lat. From here, I'm looking at stepping this leg in. So as I look to step the leg in, I step in, and I'm gonna start to hang off his body. Come through. So this one was that. So I'm gonna demonstrate another variation of an Osotogari. Uh, on the last video that we did, I demonstrated an Osotogari, except I did it from a right on right scenario, except in grappling, we deal with both side of the opponents, right and left. So this attack specifically is for when it's, I'm a right-handed fighter playing against the left-handed opponent. So a bit differently when it was right on right, the right on right, my objective was to load all of Keller's weight onto that right leg. It's the same objective, but this time, because Cal is standing with that left leg forward, it's a little bit more difficult for me to distribute the weight. So the way I approach it is a little bit different as well. So here, instead of coming across and trying to force him like that, where he's strong, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a underhook on this, his left side, my right side here. From this position, the way I'm gonna break his posture is I'm gonna grab a lock between his head and arm here. And in order for me to distribute that weight onto his right leg, I'm gonna step in with my hips to attack a hip throw and then load that weight up to take him over. So again, from this right on left scenario, it's very difficult for me to come in and kind of reach out for this leg. So the way I attack, I'm gonna take that underhook, get the pinch headlock here, 
to load up the weight. Bringing my hips in, I step, and over he goes. Throw sort of going. So bang. Look, I don't want to talk. How you try and press the kid and really. So my next attack, it's a follow-up from a strong hip throw. So a lot of the time when you're attacking with your hips, your opponent, after a while, they're gonna read the throw and they're gonna give you a real wild reaction. And the common reaction is a massive brace with their hips. So, so as I'm attacking Cal with a hip throw, a lot of the times when I enter deep enough, he's gonna step that foot and really overcommit to the def to the defense, which gives me a perfect opportunity to attack with a Kuchigari. So here, I take this underhook, I come with my hips, bang, it overcommits to the defense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly change my angle and I'm gonna hook this leg with my right foot and throw him down with Kojigari. So here, I'm gonna take my underhook. Usually I'll hug around the waist when I'm gonna throw with my hips. As I come with my hips, bang, I get this big overreaction from Keller defending the hip throw. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna circle inwards, hook the leg, and bang. Straight in for a Koichi. Climb up the half guard, and I can continue my attacks. The score like Tyreek, I'm going deep. So much shit. It is shit. Yeah. I'll the introduction. All right. Uh, I'm shit at judo. I'm much sumigashi is shit, um, but it's still better than yours. Uh, Reese is going to show you what an actual sumigashi looks like. All right, so similar to when Cal was coming out, when someone takes a collar tie, take a collar tie on me. I'm going to do the same thing where I kind of grab the back of the hand, snap it down here into this kind of two on one scenario. This time, as I climb around to take control of the lat, instead of standing behind, what I like to do is I like to really threaten and stick a leg right in the middle here, which is kind of into, it looks like dangerous territory, but I think it's a pretty safe position. So as I'm here, I'm gonna create this tension between my lat, my grip on the lat, and this hold on his tricep. So he should really feel stretched out, and it's gonna be really difficult for him to attack or grab my feet. And if he does, it's no problem. From here, I'm gonna step in with this left foot. When I step in with my left foot, I'm thinking about dragging this lat and throwing Cal's shoulders onto the back of the mat as I step in. So as I step, this arm is pulling and I'm looking to expose his shoulders to the back of the mat. So here, I have this tension. I step here. When I'm ready to throw, I'm gonna step in. My right leg is gonna swing up and I'm gonna follow through with my arms and he's gonna fall flat on his back. So here, one, I throw the leg. I'm straight up. So again, Cal takes the collar tie, I snap it down, two on one. From here, I cup the tricep, I take a strong grip on his lat, I step in front to create this tension. Usually it's gonna make uh, Keller really react, stick his hips back. When I'm ready, I step in, I expose his shoulders to the mat, I sit down, Hi guys, thanks for watching today. Judo, Jiu Jitsu and grappling are all very difficult sports. I think that uh, if you want to get into the sport and you're trying to learn something new, the easiest way to get into it is to learn the simplest things first. These are some of the simplest takedowns that uh, a doctor from Judo but work with Jiu Jitsu.